Hello everyone, I'm Ashmita Sadkuli. In this video today, I'm going to share with you all about my Erasmus Mundus um, application journey. Um, I'm doing Masters in Environmental Sciences, Policy and Management in Central European University in Vienna, Austria. Uh, my mobility uh, countries are Greece, um, Austria, Greece, and then UK. I started my application um, process around um, mid-January last year. There was a lot of um, issue about paying the application fee um, and uploading the letter of uh, reference from um, recommendation, like letter of recommendation from um, referees, my uh, professors. Um, but uh, it did work out in the end, but I suggest uh, you all do it as as quickly as you can. It's, it's December, mid December now. A lot of programs um, may still have some time until the deadline, and a lot of programs um, and some um, probably is closed already. But um, if you're looking to apply for Erasmus Mundus Joint Master Degree um, Scholarship, then I think. Um, this is the time to um, get on it. Um, so I hope if you're looking to apply uh, right now for this for the year 2022, I hope this video helps you a little bit. Uh, and if you're not, I hope I, um, um, I, I guess, uh, give you some ideas about what the uh, scholarship looks like and um, um, how you can start preparing whenever you apply. And for the rest of you, uh, I encourage you all to um, share about this scholarship to people uh, eligible uh, or people that want to uh, pursue masters abroad in Europe. A little bit about the scholarship, Erasmus Mundus Scholarship um, is funded by the EU. It is available for PhD as well as um, masters, both for one year or two years masters. Erasmus uh, uh, scholarship is uh, quite unique in a way that which you might already know um, is that there are mobilities so you move from country to country um, during your master's program you attend different universities in different countries which is a great thing for us it's around it's 47,000 euros which will be um, available to us um, for the period of two years. Um, the tuition is sent directly to the university um, and the rest of the money we um, get as stipends. First of all, um, when you get to your first mobility country, your first um, a host university, you get the installation cost and the stipend for the first month um, uh, around not around exactly five thousand euros and um, every month you get a thousand euro scholarship so even though you have to pay for your air ticket for your accommodation before you get to your um, uh, first mobility country you do get enough to cover for those costs as well so this is a full scholarship um, and enough money um, enough amount in stipend that you get for the um, entire uh, period of your master's so the very first step in um, your journey of applying for the scholarship is to go through the programs um, in the catalog um, which i think most people don't know and they get confused they know about the scholarship but they don't know where to look and they're also looking at different websites but they don't find the right one uh, so i am putting the link to the right website here on on the description box um also like uh, put up a picture here um and you go through the website and then choose three programs of your choice it may be might be programs of your choice or programs that um relate to your uh, past study or work experience um you can apply in three different programs in one uh for the year um 
So you choose the programs, you, you go through all the um, programs and uh, what you have to do is check um, each of those three chosen programs websites and see if they have scholarships available for the year which is quite important and then you also have to go through these three programs one by one uh, and look at the requirements some program might need things or documents that others might not so it really depends on the program and on the university that's um that you're going to so for the year um 2022 there are about 135 programs enlisted in this catalog you can go through the list and um, choose the programs or you can use the um, filters to you know quickly um, find the program that would suit for you this catalog will be very helpful to you to see how many countries there are in the consortium for any program um, this didn't happen to me. I had one top priority and I applied for that one and thankfully I got selected for this uh, for the same. Um, but if you find too many programs that um, you could apply for, more than three, then it is important to um, carefully choose, those, choose um, the programs out of those options. It might be a better idea to choose the program that is in two countries like you spend one year in one country and you move to the uh, next for the second year um, it can get very tricky very difficult to um, move to leave one country and then settle in another all the while uh, studying doing your masters can be very very tough for us for example we are going to have to move to greece in april uh, very soon and um, we only have two days to make the move and start our classes there so we have no idea how we're going to do it um, um, but yeah that's the point uh, moving a lot uh, will be um, quite stressful okay I'm not finding the right word but it can be very very hard and you are suggested to avoid it if you can but if you cannot if that's the program that you want then go for it so the most common documents that you need to prepare are language test um, CV um, motivation letter or SOP or personal statement and um, at least two recommendation letters from uh, either your professors or from your uh, employers. Um, and also uh, you need to uh, prepare your academic documents, the um, bachelor's certificate, um, transcript, and the last one, um, the res proof of residency from your um, place of origin. Um, Let's go back to the language test. Something I want to share is that um, you can take IELTS or TOEFL or uh, the third less common um, option, Duolingo English test. It is just a document to present to your university uh, to show that you are capable of studying in English, um, that you are proficient enough in English language. Um, yeah so, but you can also there are other options like you can uh, prove that you studied in english in your undergraduate so you are quite good at that but i took ielts test um and um i guess that is to be safe also you might be applying for other scholarships not just uh, uh erasmus so go ahead and do uh, either ielts or toefl if you if you're starting your application now and you do not have time to go for the for IELTS or TOEFL, then you can go ahead and do take the Duolingo test. Um, it is accepted, um, but again, you need to check if your your university accepts it or not. Um, 
Again, I have to warn you, if you take Duolingo and you are moving to another university after a semester or uh, after, uh, for other semesters, um, then you might have to take the test again if the other, the other university you're moving to require um, uh, an official IELTS or um, TOEFL test. So um, just an example, my friend took Duolingo test to come to CEU in Austria, but she might, looks like she might have to take IELTS test before uh, we move to Manchester, uh, University of Manchester, because University of Manchester requires you to uh, have the language certificate. Um, another one, uh, CV. So what I want to say about CV is <laughs> work hard on this one. Uh, you can use um, the website Europass um, to create CV. Uh, there's uh, really great templates and um, I didn't know this before. Before Europass, my CV was this bland, um, uh, really dull um, Word document and after Europass, I got <laughs> my CV looked quite impressive. Uh, even though the contents were the same. So it's free and it's easy to uh, make. Do remember to save your work um, and you can make an account for free. And um, yeah, Europass is what I suggest. If um, if you, if you're watching this video, know some other um, options, then do share with us in the comments. Third, Motivation letter or SOP or personal statement, it might be different. Different programs may ask for different um, kinds of, uh, of this document. So we had to answer four questions and I did it uh, in four different paragraphs. I'm going to share uh, my statement of purpose um, somewhere in this video or in the description. Um, you can go through that. Um, fourth, recommendation letters. So you need at least two recommendation letters from your professors or um, from your employers. I didn't have any employers, um, so I got both of my letters from my professors uh, in my university. So it um, can be confidential. Um, they, one of my professors sent um, his uh, letter of reference to uploaded it on the university portal um, directly. So I do not know what he wrote uh, for me or about me, um, but I guess good things. Another document that is uh, very problematic, I guess that is um, discussed a lot is the proof of residence. Um, residency certificate is just something that you get from um, wherever you're living um, from your ward or municipality um, or from your employers just proving that you've been uh, staying in living in that place in your country for a certain amount of time um, so you can state that and you can just um, um, state your information i'm going to share mine here as well so it's very simple i did not know what to write i tried to find out uh, what i uh, should write but I did not and then I ended up um, simply just four lines um, um, of information on my residence uh, proof. What can be really really helpful is that you can be um, you can directly be in touch with um, your program coordinator so you can any question that you have they will answer you just write to them you can you have the contact on each program's website. Um, so if there's any issue, any whatever your situation is, you explain it to them and they will get back to you. Another uh, tip is that there are um, Facebook groups that you can join, uh, Facebook groups of your uh, specific program. Um, so for us, we had study at MESPOM, um, thousands of people in the group and um, there is somebody there handling the uh, account or there's someone volunteering or taking on the responsibility of helping out uh, 
the new incoming students or prospective students. So um, look for the website or if you cannot find it, just ask the coordinator. So coordinator is the person to go to. Last but not the least, um, if you're watching this video and if you've reached this far, you are quite serious about it and you want to know everything about about it and it might seem very um, overwhelming and frustrating, um, you know, trying to find um, the all the information and the right information, uh, but I urge you all to hang in there and um, and just tell you that it's all worth it in the end if there's any questions or if there's any way i can um help with um anything you can um write in the comments i will get back to you if i know the answers uh, and if i know who or what to direct you to if not i <laughs> um you need to continue your research and find the answers from somewhere else um Okay, so that's it. Signing off now.